Hello everyone, welcome back. So we are discussing the localization uh, methodologies, basically map based uh, localization where we have a probabilistic uh, approach for uh, localizing the robots. And we discussed that there are two methods, uh, one is uh, Markov localization, the other one is Kalman filter based localization. And all these, uh, both the methods use the five step process which, what we discussed in the last class where we have a prediction update uh, based on the uh, encoder uh, data and the previous position. And the prediction update will give you a, a mean position and the covariance of that estimate. And then we go for a perception update. In perception update, we will uh, get the uh, data from the sensors. The, the features on in the map uh, will be collecting through sensors or the features in the environment will be collected using the sensors. And then this should be compared with the map data and then based on this matching of these uh, features, we will update the uh, position of the uh, robots. That is the perception update. So the advantage of perception update is that the prediction uh, update errors will be drastically reduced by the perception update. So this is what actually happens in the map based localization. And we saw that uh, Markov localization is one of the methods used in uh, uh, mobile robotics where we try to divide the whole area into grids and then we will try to uh, assign uh, equal probability for all the grids so that the robot does not know where it is initially and then try to up update the probability of each grid as the robot moves. So when the robot is uh, moving, it will try to up, uh, update the probability that the robot is in a particular grid using the prediction update and perception update and then whichever uh, grid has got the highest probability or the, the distribution of probability within the grids will be uh, uh, assessed and accordingly the robot's position will be estimated. So that is what actually happens in uh, Markov localization. And we saw one example where I explained about the, uh, the methodology used in Markov localization. For example, if you have a, a one dimensional uh, uh, travel, a grid in one dimensional, so you have many uh, grids in this uh, direction, x direction motion and we assume that initially the robot could be anywhere in the uh, 4 grids 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 with an equal probability of 0.25 and then we will uh, consider the uh, control input u which has got a, a, a value of uh, 2 or 3 with equal probability that the robot uh, says the encoder says that the robot has moved 2 steps or 3 steps uh, with equal probability. That means there is an uncertainty in the uh, movement of the uh, robot. So it has moved 2 or 3 steps and that is basically the, the, the motion model of odometry. So you have this initial probability belief x0 and then here this uh, motion model of odometry and based, based on this pre previous belief state x0 and the uh, motion model of odometry will uh, estimate the new position which is belief bar x1 which is the uh, prediction update by using this uh, rule where we try to add all the probabilities that the robot is at x1 and then this x0 is equal to 0 to 3 are the possible positions of the robot in the previous stage and then we will try to find out the, the use the conditional probability that the robot is at a particular x1 when the control input u1 is given from the initial position x0 and the previous belief state x0. So we will take this uh, uh, probability and find out what is the probability that the robot is at 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 or whatever the grid. So that is what actually we do. And when we do this, we will get a, a distribution like this. So after the uh, first movement from x0 to x1, the robot uh, has got a uh, estimate of its position in this format where actually it says that it could be in uh, grid 2 with a probability of 0.125 and could be in 3, 4 or 5 with an equal probability of 0.25 and it could be in point, uh, grid 6 with a probability of 0.125. So that is a there is a large uncertainty in the position of the robots. So that is the uh, prediction update. Now we go for the perception update where we get the information from the sensor sensor, a range sensor will measure the distance uh, from the starting point to the current position 
and then use that information to update the position. Now, the sensor also is not accurate. So, the sensor will tell that it could be 4 units or 5 units away from the uh, starting point. So, there is an uncertainty. It says that it could be in 4 or uh, fifth, fourth, uh, uh, sorry, the 5th grid or the 6th grid based on the information. So, there is an uncertainty in the sensor measurement also, but still it says that okay, this is the equal probability that you have. So, this is your sensor uh, data or the map information collected from the uh, sensors. Now, using this uh, perception update, perception data and the belief x1, we will try to find out the actual belief state, belief x1. So, that is what actually the the perception update and this can actually be obtained by using these two uh, probabilities the belief bar x1 and the uh, perception uh, or the sensor uncertainty or the measurement uh, uh, model we can get use that one to get the probability estimated and that is what actually we do. So, here we can see that uh, yeah. So, you can see that this is the uh, belief x1 and the measurement update we have and then using the measurement update, we will be able to calculate the belief x1. So, we will get the probability of the measurement and the previous belief state or the belief bar x1 and uh, get the total probability and find out what is the probability that the robot is at 2, 3, 4, 5 or 6 based on this. And then if you do this uh, multiplication of probabilities p z1 x1 m uh, belief x1 you will be able to get the probability at these two locations 5 and 6. So, you can actually set the uh, belief state, the belief that the robot is at x5 or x6 can be obtained by this one. So, you have 0.5, the robot is at 5 is 0.5 from the sensor and 0.25 from the prediction. So, 0.5 into 0.125 into 0.5, so that will be 0.25, sorry 0.5 into 0.25. So, this is 0.5 into 0.25 and at 6 it is 0.5 into 0 0.5 multiplied by 0 0.125. So, this is the probability that the robot is at x5 or x6. Now, these two if you add these two it will not become 1. So, we need to have uh, the total probability is equal to 1. So, if you use a, a eta a uh, multiplication factor and if you do that uh, multiplication factor you will get it as 0 0.67 and 0 0.13, 0 0.33. So, that is the way how you get the probability uh, the robot is at 5 or 6. Now, we know that uh, after this uh, perception uh, update, the robot is much more certain that it is in at, uh, 5, the robot is currently uh, at uh, the grid 5 rather than any other grid 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 or uh, 7, 8, 9 and uh, there is a small probability that it could be at 6 also, but it is very high probability that it is at 0 0.6, I mean at the uh, grid 5. So, you can see that the uncertainty of the position estimate from the prediction has come drastically increased uh, with a perception update. So, you will be getting that the belief that ro robot is at 5 is much higher than any other uh, uh, grid. So, this is the way how the uh, perception update helps to increase the accuracy of uh, localization. So, this is the, the Markov method of uh, localization. And I mentioned about the 3D grid also. So, now you can see the previous example which I mentioned, uh, you can see that uh, it actually uses the same principle here because it is seeing an image in a, a pole here and so it increases the uncertain, I mean increases the probability and then again it sees here, it actually uh, again it comes here, it increases the probability. So, you will be able to get a very high probability that the robot is at this point. So, this is the way how the Markov localization helps to improve the prediction and uh, uh, the actual localization uh, of the robot using the prediction update and perception update. Okay, so that is that is about the Markov localization. So, what we need to have is a fine fixed decomposition grids which actually results into a huge state space. So, when you have a uh, fine grid and uh, I mean large area and a fine grid and we have uh, the, the state also is uh, more number of uh, states to be uh, observed, then it becomes a very huge state space. So, very large processing power and large memory. So, that is the main problem with the Markov method of localization. 
and uh, there were many methods suggested in the literature for uh, reducing the complexity. Uh, how to reduce the number of states, how to reduce the number of grids and how to reduce the number of computations needed at each step. So, there are uh, methods like randomized sampling, particle filter, etcetera, etcetera. So, we are not going into all those uh, methods here. You can, if you are interested, you can actually go through the literature and you can find out that uh, uh, people have been trying to improve the uh, Markov localization methodology using uh, many uh, strategies. And there are uh, lots of papers in the literature uh, about uh, these methods. So, in some cases, you know, you update only 10 percent of all possible locations. So, do not update all the locations, only 10 percent of possible locations can be uh, updated. So, that is, these are the strategies adopted by uh, various researchers. Okay, so, that is about uh, the Markov localization. So, now let us look at the, the Kalman filter localization. So, uh, the, the difficulties with uh, uh, Markov is uh, known that a uh, lot of uh, computations needed. You need to uh, update the uh, all the grid uh, at every uh, uh, update, update a stage. But the, the advantage is that uh, you do not need to know the exact location of the robot. The robot could be anywhere. So, it can actually uh, up, update its location wherever it is or even if it does not know the location, it can uh, identify its uh, location based on the updates that it gets through perception and uh, prediction, prediction and uh, perception. So, to uh, simplify that process over uh, we do not need to uh, uh, go for that kind of a complex computation. So, the Kalman filter based localization was uh, proposed. So, Kalman filter is uh, uh, it is a very uh, useful and uh, highly utilized uh, filter applied in many fields. It is not only in for localization, you will see that it is applicable in many other fields also. So, it actually uh, uh, takes that uh, the, the whole system and then we assume that there is a si error in the system and then you have a, a measurement uh, from the uh, uh, so, uh, using the sensors and error using the measuring devices and then it takes these two uh, information uh, from the system uh, state and the observation and then uses a, a filter to uh, fuse these two information and get the <coughs> optimal estimate. So, that is basically the principle of uh, Kahneman filter localization. So, it is a mathematical mechanism for producing an optimal estimate of system state based on the knowledge of the system and the measuring device. So, you have the knowledge of the system and the measuring uh, device. And, uh, to some extent, we know the system noise and the measurement errors. So, that means every system has got its own uh, uh, errors and the measurement system also has got its own errors. So, we know these two, uh, the measurement uh, errors and the uncertainty in the dynamic models and once you know this, then you can actually fuse this information to get a, a better estimate of the system. So, that is basically the principle. So, it is the, the system state can be estimated using a, a measurement and the previous, uh, the knowledge of the previous position. So, the in, in this localization, what we assume that we know the previous position and its uncertainty and from there we start with the new calculation. So, Kalman filter basically requires the, the previous state and its uncertainty to uh, do the update. Now, how does it work? Okay, it is a powerful method for sensor vision and the system is assumed to be linear. So, we assume that it is linear and with the white Gaussian noise. So, we assume that uh, the distribution of uh, noise is uh, white Gaussian that is a normal distribution which can be represented using a, a probability density function. So, that is basically the uh, understanding here. Now, what is the uh, uh, requirement the initial position and that also is assumed to be a white noise. So, the uh, uncertainty in the initial position also is considered to be a, a white noise and uh, the uh, system is also to be assumed to be a white noise including the measurement system. Now, what is the uh, benefit of doing this or how does it work? So, if you want to know uh, the, the basic principle of uh, uh, the Kahneman filter, we need to look at the, uh, the way how it works. So, now suppose you have a, so the basic principle is that suppose you have two measurements, one is this one and then this, another is this one, okay. So, we assume that this is uh, uh, a one measurement. So, we say that this mu x and this is uh, mu y. 
Now, this can say so this distribution. So, we have one distribution here and another distribution here. So, uh, this is uh, x and y. So, some distribution you have and we have that this has got a sigma x and this has got a sigma y. So, these are the two distributions. Now, the Kalman filter uh, uh, strategy is that when you fuse these two, you will be always able to get a, a distribution which is more accurate and less uncertainty. So, we can actually get a new mu by combining these two distributions, you will be able to get a new distribution where you will be getting a new sigma and this sigma will be always smaller than sigma x or sigma y. So, that is the basic principle. So, you can actually get a, a new estimate where the covariance will be smaller than the two of these two uh, uh, signals or the, the systems. So, you have two distributions with its own uh, mean and covariance and if you combine these two using a, a Kalman filter, you will be able to get a distribution or an estimate based on these two which will be having a, a covariance which is less than the covariance of these two. So, you will be always getting a better estimate using this fusion of these two uh, data. So, that is the basic principle of uh, the Kahneman filter. So, how is it uh, uh, coming or what is the, the mathematical uh, foundation for that? We will just look into that. So, as I mentioned, so let us uh, consider these are two distributions. So, I will call this as uh, q1 and q2. So, this is uh, and uh, this sigma q and uh, sigma q1, sigma q2 or sigma 1, sigma 2 we can call. This is sigma 1, this is sigma 2. So, it has got a standard deviation of sigma 1 and sigma 2, these are two signals. So, let me write this uh, P1 Q as n Q1 sigma 1 square is the covariance. So, we will write this Q1, Q2 as the mean value of this and uh, sigma is the uh, sigma 1 and sigma the standard deviation. So, sigma 1 square is the covariance. Similarly, P 2 Q, so that the distribution, the, uh, the, the probability uh, uh, function can be written as n Q 2 sigma 2 square. So, that is the, uh, these two uh, distributions what we have P 1 and P 2 Q. Now, suppose we want to combine these two, then we can use the Bayes rule and we can write it as P Q is equal to P 1 Q 1, P 2 Q 2. That is the, the Bayes rule of uh, uh, this the probability. Now, if we write this P 1 Q, so P 1 Q can be written as the distribution can be written because we are assuming it is a white noise and uh, uh, the, the distribution. So, we can write this as 1 by sigma 1 root 2 pi exponential minus q minus q 1 by 2 sigma sigma 1 square. So, this way we can write p 1 q. So, similarly p 2 q also can be written as 1 by sigma 2 root 2 pi exponential of minus q minus q 2 by 2 sigma 2 square. So, this is the distribution p 1 q and p 2 q. <coughs> so, that is the <coughs> assumption that we have it has a white noise uh, distribution. Now, this p q when you do this uh, base rule uh, multiplication, we will be getting it as. Uh, so, we can actually uh, multiply these two, we will be getting it as uh, 1 by Okay, so, if you multiply these two, you will be able to write it as 1 by <coughs> sig. So, this can be written as 1 over sigma 1 sigma 2 2 pi exponential uh, 
minus q minus q1 at square divided by 2 sigma 1 square minus q minus q2 square divided by 2 sigma 2 square. So, we will be able to get this p q as this format. Now, we know that uh, p q is also assumed to be a white noise when you have the uh, total probability that also will be a, a white noise. So, if that is the case, so if p q can be written in this format, then we can again assume that what is the corresponding sigma of p can be obtained from this relationship. So, if you do that, we will be getting this as q that is the, the mean of this estimate p q. So, if you have a new estimate using these two, you can actually say that this is the q. So, this q, q can be obtained as q hat can be obtained as q 1 plus sigma 1 square by sigma 1 square plus sigma 2 square multiplied by q 2 hat minus q 1 hat. That is the new mean value of the estimate. So, we have two estimates initially p 1 and p 2. Now, a new estimate by combining these two we will be getting it as p q and the mean value of q is given as q 1 plus that is this is q 1 this plus some value and that value is something multiplied. So, this this thing is the this is multiplied with the, the difference of these two means. So, that is q 2 minus q 1. So, you have this q 2 minus q 1 as the, the difference of the pre, the two means of the previous estimates the two estimates that multiplied by a factor and that is added to q 1 will be the new q. So, the q will be the new mean will be more than q 1 and that will be a function of the difference of the q 1 and q 2 also. So, that is the new mean value for the estimate and it is uh, sigma square its variance is given as sigma 1 square minus sigma 1 to the power of 4 divided by sigma 1 square plus sigma 2 square. So, this will be the new covariance of the estimate. So, the previous estimate has got uh, sigma 1 and sigma 2 as the uh, variance. Now, sigma the new variance uh, will be sigma 1 square minus sigma 1 to the power of 4 by sigma 1 square plus sigma 2 square and this will be always a positive uh, quantity and therefore, you will be seeing that this will be always smaller than sigma 1 square. So, it is a uh, covariance will be always smaller than the sigma 1 square and uh, the sigma 2 square also. So, both uh, the new covariance will be always smaller than sigma 1 square or sigma 2 square and that is the, the basic principle of Kalman uh, filter uh, uh, estimate. And this factor is known as the Kalman gain. So, we call this sigma 1 square plus sigma, two, sigma 1 square over sigma 1 square plus sigma 2 square is known as the Kalman gain. So, this is basically the, the Kalman gain. So, we call this as the Kalman gain. Okay, so, this is the, the principle of uh, Kalman filter. So, we assume two uh, distributions p 1 q and p 2 q uh, with its own uh, mean value q 1 hat and uh, sigma uh, q 2 hat and its variance sigma 1 square and sigma 2 square. And then we combine these two using the Bayes rule and find out what is the new mean and covariance. So, the new mean and, mean and variance and you will see that the new mean is the, the first mean plus Kalman gain multiplied by the difference of the two gains, two means and then you have the covariance which is smaller than the, uh, the two uh, of the previous estimate. So, that is basically the principle of uh, Kalman uh, filter. So, the same can be used for uh, position estimate also. If we have the old position as x 0 and then a position estimate based on the uh, map or the sensor information is this one. We can combine these two and get a new estimate which will be having a lesser, uh, I mean will be having a better mean value and a better uh, uh, variance. So, that is the uh, principle of Kalman filter localization. So, 
the principle is basically to have two measurement, two, read, uh, two distributions and then combine them to get a, a better estimate of the robot position. Okay, so, the two measurements will be there and then we have this Kalman gain which is sigma 1 square over sigma 1 uh, square plus sigma 2 square and then assume ensure that these two will actually uh, the sigma square that is the estimated uh, variance will be less than the, uh, the previous two uh, uh, variants. So, you will be always getting a, a better estimate of the position. So, that is basically the uh, Kalman uh, filter gain, uh, Kalman filter based uh, uh, localization principle. Now, if it is a, so if it is a, a n dimensional case, so we will not be able to use this uh, sigma square, so we have to go for the, the covariance matrix. So, in the matrix form we can write this as, so the measurement will be in, for an n dimensional case. So, if you consider it as an n dimensional estimate, so for single dimension or one dimension, one dimension you normally use the sigma and uh, the mean and the sigma values, uh, the standard deviation values. But for a uh, uh, n dimensional case, what we do is we write this new q that is the mean value of the estimate can be written as q1 plus p multiplied by p plus r inverse q2 minus q1 where q2 and q1 are the mean values of the previous estimates, the two estimates, one is the measurement and the other position estimate and uh, q1 is the uh, first one. So, you have this q1, q2 minus uh, q1 and here p is the covariance p and r. So, p and r are the covariance of the two measurements. So, covariance of q1 and q2. So, P, P and R are the covariance of Q1 and Q2. So, the first measurement has got a covariance of P1, second one has got a P covariance of R and a mean of Q1 and Q2. So, P and R are the uh, covariances of Q1 and Q2. And this P plus P multiplied by P plus R inverse is this is known as the Kalman gain. In the previous uh, case we meant, uh, represented in terms of the sigma. But here, since they are matrices, P into P plus R inverse will be the Kalman gain. So, now you can see that the new covariance, uh, sorry, the new mean will be the, the first mean plus Kalman gain multiplied by the difference of these two measurements, Q2 and Q1. So, that is the uh, new value of Q. And the covariance of the new estimate, so P and R are the covariance of the uh, measurements. Now, the new covariance p hat can be written as p hat is equal to p minus p plus r inverse multiplied by p. So, this is basically the new covariance. So, we have p as the covariance of the first measurement q1 and then r as the second one. So, p minus p plus r inverse p which can be written as p minus k multiplied by sigma i n k transpose, where k is the Kalman gain which is p into p plus r inverse and sigma in i n is known as the innovation covariance. We call this as the innovation covariance which is defined as p plus r. So, this is if an p plus r is known as the innovation covariance. That is the, the covariance of p uh, q1 and q2 are added and that is known as the innovation covariance p plus r. So, the new covariance of the estimate will be p hat is equal to p minus k sigma i n k transpose, where k is the Kalman gain given by p into p plus r inverse and sigma innovation is the innovation covariance which is nothing but p plus r and then k, k transpose will be the new covariance. So, when you have two uh, uh, one, one initial position and a measurement, you can combine these two or can, you can fuse these two information, two data and get a new estimate with a mean of q hat and a covariance of p hat and that is given by this relationship. So, what we need to know is the uh, uh, mean value of the estimate and its covariance and the new uh, the mean value of the measurement and its covariance. Once you have these two information, you will be able to get a 
a, a Kalman uh, filter based uh, estimate which will be having a new mean and a covariance and this new mean will be better than the previous two measurements and the new covariance will be smaller than the two measurements. So, you will be having a much better estimate or you will be having much less error in the estimated position of the robot. So, that is basically how we do the Kalman filter based uh, uh, localization. I hope you understood this. So, let us uh, see how this can be implemented in a, a real uh, a mobile, I mean the uh, mobile robot. Okay. So, what we do here is uh, assume that the uh, robot is at a, a position initially. So, we take this as the, the robot position and the robot is at a, a, a position which is given as uh, previous position x t minus 1. So, I assume that the robot is at t minus 1. So, this is x t minus 1. Now, from this position, so x t minus 1 has got a, a mu value mu and and its uh, deviation p. So, we call this as mu and p that is the mean value and its uh, uh, covariance is known for that particular x t minus 1. And from there, you give a control input u and the robot moves to t x t. So, this is the control input uh, given u t is given here. So, the robot moves to the x t. Okay, so, now we have a prediction uh, update that the robot is it has moved from x t minus 1 to x t using the control input. So, this x t minus 1, so the at this position the mean value x t minus 1 can be or if the new value x t sorry the new x t the new position x t can be estimated as a function of x t minus 1 plus sorry x t minus 1 with the control input u t. So, that is basically the uh, position. So, x t that is the new position x t which uh, it's, its mean value of x can be obtained as a function of x t and u t. So, we use the control input uh, uh, to calculate the new position x t and it will be having a covariance. So, it is p t can be obtained using the error propagation rule that we saw in the previous case where we use this as f x p t minus 1 f x transpose plus f u q q u f u transpose. So, this was the error propagation model that we saw. So, we will be able to move from x t minus 1 to x t in the prediction stage. So, this is the prediction stage. In the prediction stage, we will see that the robot has actually moved from x t minus 1 to x t and the mean value of x t and uh, the covariance p t can be obtained using this relationship because we know based on the robot kinematics you will be able to find out what is the new position of x t uh, if we know the uh, control inputs. And the covariance uh, or the uncertainty in that position can be obtained using the uh, error propagation model. We saw this for the for a uh, differential drive robot how do we actually calculate the position uh, and uh, its uh, uncertainty. So, that is the, the prediction update for the robot. So, now we have this prediction. So, initially x t minus 1 was known and p t minus 1. So, I call this as p t minus 1 is the uncertainty here. So, the position uh, x, so I call this position x t minus 1 and uh, the p t minus 1 is its uh, uncertainty the t minus 1. Now, from here we have moved to with the uh, prediction. So, initially assume that it was like this with a x hat and uh, uh, p t minus 1. Now, it has moved to here. So, you have a higher uncertainty. So, you can say that this is the uncertainty. So, now it has the uncertainty has increased because of the uh, sensor errors and the previous p t minus 1. So, the new p t hat which is the prediction update will be given by this and the new position x t will be given by this. So, this is x t x t hat uh, the new position at t is given by this and its uncertainty is p t and that too can be calculated using this. So, now the robot is uh, this position with the prediction update. 
Now we go for the next stage which is the perception update. So in the perception update, what we do, we will look at using the sensors and then get all the information coming from the sensor as ZT. So assume that the robot is here and it has got a sensor and it measures something from uh, the uh, surroundings. Okay, so I am just representing it here. So there is a wall here or there is a wall here or something. So there may be many things. So it can, it can actually, the robot can actually see or the sensor can see n number of objects in the uh, vicinity. Okay, so that is we call it as ZT so observation. So the sensor is seeing ZTI where I is equal to 1 to n. So it can actually see n objects. So that is basically the, the observation of the sensor. So we call this as the observation, observation using the sensors. And then the next step, so the, uh, the perception, the first step is basically observation using the sensor. So you will get see there are 5, 6 objects which is seen in the uh, uh, robot or seen by the uh, sensors which is attached to the robot. So, these are the features Z at T location. Now, we check with the map so that is the next one which is basically the, the measurement prediction. We call this as the measurement prediction. So, measurement prediction is the robot will check with its map and then see look at the map and then see if the robot is at this location at T, what are the things it is supposed to see, okay. So that is basically the Z T. So we call this as Z hat T, okay, we call it as J, Z hat T G, uh, J and J can be 1 to M. There can be uh, many things that the robot uh, is supposed to see, but whether it is all, all are seen or not is not, uh, it's not, not, uh, not known, but if it is here, it should see these two, okay. That is what the map says, okay. It should see these two or more also depending on where the robot is, uh, its current position. Some of them may not be visible to the robot uh, sensor, some of them may be visible to the sensor. So, what it will do? It will check what is the measurement prediction we call this ZTJ. So, one is the observation from the using sensor, one is the prediction using the map. So, from the map, the robot will be able to predict, okay, I am able to see 5 objects. Sensor see, tells, okay, I am able to see 6 objects. Okay, it could be like that or the sensor is saying, I am able to see 4. But the as on the map, it says, no, no, if you are actually in that position, you should have see 5 objects. So, this way, there will be a difference. And then, we try to find out what is the difference between these two measurements. So, we will try to find out, are they matching ZT and the ZT hat i and j for all i and j try to find out what is the mapping between these two are they able to are they matching properly or not if they are matching exactly what is there in the map and what is there in the what the robot is seeing that means the robot predicted position is accurate there is no error in the predicted position of the robot so it's exactly at t okay so this can actually be explained using uh, uh, this way suppose this is the um, these are the objects on the in the environment and the robot is traveling from here this location so it is moving in this direction okay and the robot predicts that it is in this position and using the sensor it should be able to see all things what are there in the visible vicinity okay it will say that my position is this and from there i can actually see this object But in reality, the robot may be somewhere here. We do not know. The robot has actually reached here instead of there. The predicted position is not correct. So, the robot is actually here and it is able to see this object, this many objects. So, there is a difference between what the actually the robot is seeing and the, what the robot is supposed to see from that location. So, that is basically the, the difference between these two. So, we try to map these two and see what is the difference in this. Uh, uh, what is seen and the, what is predicted. So, that is basically the second stage where we do the matching, the third stage where we do the matching. So, the matching cannot be done directly because what all the map is with respect to a reference frame. So, the map will be having a reference frame and the features are actually given with respect to the reference frame. 
and the robot is seeing from using the sensor which is mounted onto the sensor platform at the robot platform and robot will be having its own coordinate frame. So, what it is seeing it will say I am seeing a uh, object at a distance r1 and at an angle theta with respect to my reference frame. But this object is defined with respect to the map as this is the distance to the uh, r and this is the theta. So, we need to if you want to compare these two objects we need to move everything into a single coordinate frame. So, we will move all these to a, a common coordinate frame and then do the uh, matching. So, first we will represent all those uh, uh, features with respect to the uh, common frame either the robot frame or the uh, map frame and then find out the difference between these two that is the mapping stage. So, we need to transfer this to the uh, common frame and then find out the difference between these two. So, that is basically the difference. So, what we will do here is we will try to find out the uh, each one all of these transfer this will be transferred to the map frame. So, all this will be transferred to the, the I mean all the map features will be transferred to the robot frame using a transformation matrix H we will call this as a H j. So, this Z t will be transferred to the map frame using a transformation h j at x t m. So, we will find out a transformation matrix and then we transfer all these parameters uh, all these to the j th the uh, frame the robot frame using a transformation matrix. So, this h is the, the transformation matrix all those features that is seen from the uh, map or which is predicted from the using the map at x t will be transferred to the robot uh, coordinate frame and then we get this z t j and then that z t j will be used for the comparison. It is not the directly what the map is giving, but after transferring to the uh, transferring to the robot frame we will find out the difference. So, that is that z t j. Okay, so, once uh, that uh, matching is done then we will find out how much is the difference between these two I mean the, between i and i or i j because there can be difference numbers. So, we will try to map each feature, feature with what is supposed to see and then find out which one is matching and then find out how much is the difference and this difference is known as the v t i j. So, we call this as the v t i j that is what is the difference between i th and j th observation and the uh, measurement prediction and that we call just the innovation. So, the difference between this is known as the innovation and that is given as z t i minus z t hat j. Okay, so, this is basically the innovation that the difference between these two the features are known as the uh, innovation. So, we get this innovation. So, that is the mapping st matching stage we will get the innovation and once we get this innovation we will uh, try to find out the innovation covariance. So, that is what actually we do we will try to find out the difference and then we will try to find out the innovation covariance. So, we call this as VTI is the innovation and then we will try to find out the innovation covariance which can which is written as sigma i n at the t for i j. So, that is the innovation covariance. So, this innovation covariance is obtained as because we have this uh, uh, measurement sensor uh, uh, uncertainty is known position uncertainty is known because the robot is measuring from its position using a sensor. So, sensor has got uncertainty, position also has got uncertainty. So, the measurement in uh, covariance or the innovation covariance can be written as this is equal to h j p t hat minus h transpose h j transpose plus r t i where h is the uh, Jacobian of this transformation h j. So, we have the transformation h j which transform from the one coordinate frame to the other coordinate frame. So, h is the Jacobian of this. So, this is the Jacobian of h j is h j and p t is the covariance at t. So, that is what we calculated here from x t minus 1 to x t it moved. So, there is a covariance p t hat. So, that is the p t hat and r t i is the covariance of the sensor. So, you are using a sensor to get the information. So, the sensor also will be having a covariance, uh, it is an uncertainty. So, R t i is the sensor uh, measurement uh, noise or a sensor covariance. So, now we have this innovation and innovation covariance. 
innovation is basically the difference between these uh, measurements and the innovation covariance is the uncertainty in the measurement also. So, once we have these two, then we can actually get the uh, uh, an estimate of the new position using the uh, Kalman gain, Kalman uh, gain principle, which can be written as H x t is equal to x t hat plus k t v t. Okay. So, x t hat is the position here that is the predicted position using the control input and the, this x t is the new estimated position by after the measurement that is x t hat plus k t which is the Kalman gain and v t is the innovation, innovation is this one that is the innovation, v t is the difference between the measured and the uh, observed uh, uh, sense and the predicted and uh, observed uh, uh, features that is the, the difference is the innovation. So, we get this innovation v t from the sensor and the map information and then we have this k t which is the Kalman gain and x t is the previous uh, the predicted position and k t is given as here the k t will be v t hat that is the previous uh, covariance h t which is the Jacobian transpose and the sigma innovation inverse that is the Kalman gain. So, we will be getting this k t as p t h t transpose sigma i n inverse. Now, we know this, we know this and we know this p t and uh, p t hat is known, h t is the transformation, sigma innovation covariance is known. So, you will be able to get k t also, so Kalman gain also obtained here. Once you have this, you will be able to get uh, the new position estimate x t. Similarly, once you have this position, you can get the new um, uh, covariance also. So, the new covariance can be obtained as that is p t. So, we are, what we have is p t heads. So what we are interested in now the new covariance p t can be written as p t hat that is the previous covariance minus k t sigma i n k t transpose. So, this would be the new covariance. So, you have the new position estimate and its covariance using the Kalman gain. So, that is the basic principle of uh, Kalman, uh, Kalman gain uh, or Kalman filter based uh, uh, localization of mobile robots. So, there are a few steps involved in it. First, we do the prediction uh, and then we uh, use the sensors to find out all the features. Then we use the map to check what are the features supposed to see and then we try to match them by transferring all this information to a single coordinate frame. We try to match them and find the differences between this scene and uh, supposed to scene and using that we will find out the innovation and innovation covariance and once you know innovation and innovation covariance, we will find out the Kalman gain and use the Kalman gain and innovation to get the new position predicted. So, that is basically the principle of uh, Kalman filter based uh, localization. So, I will uh, uh, stop here, uh, please go through this uh, uh, lecture and then uh, we will discuss this again tomorrow, we will uh, explain it and then explain the, the uh, way in which it can be implemented for the mobile robot also. So, that we will discuss in the next class. Thank you.